I'm not going to advocate that you should go out and buy a ton of books. I have a ton of books that I bought over the years, some of which I've used and others which I said, okay, gotcha, but I can't go there. And here are four books that I like a lot that I use on a regular basis because they give me information that I need. So, I am a landscape artist, but it doesn't matter whether you're painting landscapes or florals. Everything comes about composition. So here's the 14 formulas for painting fabulous landscapes by Barbara Nuss. And she goes through, and she's going to tell you, uh, she's an oil painter. And she has some very lovely paintings in here. But what she does talk about very clearly is how to make decisions about your composition so that you lead a person's eye in. See, she's talking about good negative space, a visual path, what needs to happen to make your paintings do what you want. Now, she's got mixing, she's got all sorts of things. Here's one that shows you the bullseye and her sketches of how to make your eye go where it wants to go. I don't pull this out very much anymore to use it because I've used it and I practiced it and I and I know a lot about um, these things now I can recognize when I have succeeded and failed. Here's that S format I was talking about. When you start looking at paintings that you like after you've read this book, a good exercise is to pick out which one they used because there's just not that many. Uh, formats and it's not that you're plagiarizing this this is what everybody does but this will help you learn to see them as far as your watercolor is concerned I'm learning to mix I love Jean Dobie's making watercolor sing and you can see my notes here that I've written she has an incredible knowledge about how to make colors do the things that you want it to do and as I've told you already, limited palette, mix, mix, mix. You'll find recipes in here that you'll want to use. She has her own style. There's no way that we can emulate someone else's style. Our hand is our hand that's going to do what it does. However, learning to mix and learning granulations and learning what it's able to do is wonderful. There again, look at that simple composition and how gorgeous it is. Where did your eye go? Right there. Gradation going across. Those are things you're going to want to pay attention to. Another great book is Tony Couch's Watercolor. You can do it. And it has a wealth of information about how watercolor behaves, about composition, how to lift out, all of those things that I talk about and do because I did. I studied with Tony and I, and I really learned a lot and still reference these books at times just to refresh myself. So Tony Couch's Watercolor, you can do it. And one that Tony Couch's recommends, which I think is a wonderful book, is Painting Trees and Landscapes by Ted Couchke. Uh, you ha it is out of print, but I think you can find used ones. In the back, he gives you different compositions that you can draw from and use. You can't. You're not going to put that on a piece of paper and try to sell it and claim it's your composition. However, for practice, it's great. But he gives you trees of all different I mean, you name it, there's trees. He's drawn all these trees. What I use it for is to inspire me to draw more trees, draw more elements that I want to put into my paintings. So there you go. This is a set of books. Ted Kautzky, K-A-U-T-Z-K-Y. Trees and Landscapes. Tony Couch's Watercolor, you can do it. Gene Dobie's Making Watercolor Sing, or Making Color Sing. And Barbara Nuss, 14 Formulas for Painting Fabulous Landscapes, if you're a landscape artist. You can, however, use her formats for composition, even in your still lives. So, have fun.